Hey everyone, welcome back to the range. My name is Matt. Got some ammunition to test today. This flavor is 556 by 45 millimeters. Our super fancy green tip from Winchester. This is M855 ball. Let's throw him on the table and talk about what we're gonna do today. For all of our 556 testing, we have a wide variety of barrel lengths from seven and a half inch all the way up to and including 22 inches. We have a Pro Chrono Digital DLX. It's about 70 to 75 degrees and sunny outside today. After we've collected all of our velocity figures and it's a basic function check in our guns, we do a practical accuracy test at 100 yards to give you a potential of what you could expect for accuracy on this. And then we have some closing thoughts and prayers and we send you on your way. We'll start with our shortest barrel length, which is our seven and a half inch pistol build from Palmetto State Armory. Got a Bushnell TRS 25 up top. Don't really recommend that red dot unless you have absolutely no money. I don't know if this particular model of mine is defective, but I've changed the batteries and at the brightness setting of 11, it is very dim compared to some of the other red dots that I have, even some of the more budget oriented like the Sig Romeos. Little, little tiny guy here. Holy muzzle flash. It, and I, I think I'm blind. Definitely don't recommend using this with a seven and a half inch barrel in the middle of the night for personal protection and a muzzle brake because you be blind. And now for our 10 and a half inch barrel, this is a Palmetto State Armory build. This is my short barrel rifle. It's got the no step on snick lower. This is their classic upper with the gray hand guards. Got a Trijicon MRO up top, Yankee Hill single port Kurz muzzle brake out front. With as much muzzle blast coming off some of these guns, probably should remember not to take that laptop through airport security and hope that I would never get the random swab because that would fail miserably. Air. Still getting quite a bit of muzzle flash off this. See if it goes away when we get to the 16 and 20 inch. Now onto our 16 inch. This is a Stag Model 1L. That means it's left hand eject because I am a Southpaw. We've got an EOTech up top, another Yankee Hill three port muzzle brake out front. Hyperfire 24C trigger. Really like that trigger. See if we get very close to 3,000 feet per second in that. If we do, that means we have a really good M855 loading on our hands. Oh yeah, we do. Not detecting any muzzle blast on the 16 inch now, or muzzle flash, I should say. There we go, not too bad. I think if I forgot to mention, this particular Winchester M855 is 2021 and it's actually made in Lake City. They won the contract from the United States government from Federal, so they actually run the Lake City ammunition plant now for the Federal government. And now for our 20 inch barrel, another Palmetto State Armory upper. This is the FN Premium with the double chrome line, one and seven twist. We have a no name lower on here. We got the Chinesium Stag Arms Ambi Charging Handle from a couple Black Fridays ago. This barrel length is where we get into the armor busting category, depending on the particular medium you are shooting against.
trying to shoot the uh, spider webs that I see flying down range. Not too bad. We didn't gain a whole lot from the 20 inch. We'll get to the 22 inch and see if we get to that magical number that I like to see with that long barrel length. And now for our 22 inch, this is a TC Compass with a Yankee Hill three port QD muzzle brake out front. Burris full field two, three by nine scope on there. I like the Oryx chassis because it takes the Accuracy International magazine so we can get 10 rounds in these guys. No rotary magazines to mess around with. And this 22 inch barrel is the ultimate for armor penetration, at least at the NIJ distance at 45 feet. We may someday have to try to do a distance test to see how far out we can get some of these 5.56 loads to penetrate certain armor. I'm going to guess maybe out to 50 to 75 yards depending on how it goes. I'm looking for over 3,100 feet per second out of this guy. Ooh. I think I found a new favorite load, guys. Last one. Not too shabby. We had a little bit of a big extreme spread there. I saw some over 31, 30 feet per second in the last couple dipped below 3100, but that's a good full power M855 load. I mentioned it a few times in my videos what I use for a lead sled, but in case this is the first time you are stopping by, I use a hydro sled from Caldwell. You can fill this front tank with any kind of media water, and I've got sand in mine because I would figure water wouldn't be too good leaving it out all the time, not changing it out but I've got a nice solid steel desk that I shoot from. I'm at the 100 yard mark right now. We're using the TC Compass with a three to nine power scope. I thought about putting a rail up top and then switching out for our 18 power primary arms for a little better optics at 100 yards, but not too bad. I've got this little plastic chair that I sit in. And down yonder is our target. Now I have read on the forums before that American made 62 grain ball M855 SS109 is not known for its accuracy and that appears to be the case here. 3.034 inches is the best group that I shot today. Now bear in mind we are using the TC Compass that has a 22 inch barrel but it is one in nine twist. Maybe this particular bullet really prefers the one in eight or even the more ideal one in seven twist we this is actually with the jk armament rifle kit on here so that is the best case scenario that i got today 95 to maybe 100 degrees outside little to no wind very hot now these are some of the other groups one two three four five you can see that this is just not printing a very good group this is why I always say your mileage may vary. This particular bullet appears to not like my gun. Well, everyone, that about concludes our testing for our Green Tip M855 from Winchester. We had what I would consider a full power load, really good velocities out of these 16 through 22 inch barrels. As far as the accuracy goes, though, we just didn't have any good luck with the one and nine twist. I will annotate and add any additional information to the spreadsheet if I have time to get out our 20 inch upper. As I close out all of my videos, I always take a moment at the end to thank all those who helped make these possible. Number one is my Patreon supporters. Number two is Sam at SG Ammo for having that available for us to purchase. And of course, number three is you all for watching. Until next time, I'll catch you at the range.